everyone welcome back to another video today I just felt like coloring a flower <laughs> and of course I took out my most favorite book in the entire world Joanna Basford's World of Flowers I absolutely love coloring in this book and I've been coloring so many other things and doing the color along and making so many other videos and everybody always loves these videos where I just color a flower especially in this book so I decided that we would go back and do a little bit of this so if you enjoy videos like this please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel turn your bell notifications on so that you always know when I post new content. And if you enjoy this video, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up because it really helps out my channel a whole lot and I appreciate it so much. Let's go ahead and get into this video. This is the flower that I plan to color today. And so many people have asked for videos on Prismacolor combinations. So I figure that we could kind of do two things at one time. Come up with a new Prismacolor combination as well as color a flower and see how that combination looks. Now I've picked out four different colors. I don't know if I will end up bringing other colors in but we'll review the color combination at the end of the video after the flower is done to make sure that you know what the actual combination was. So I've got Violet which is PC932 and then I have Mulberry, which is PC995. I've got my white because I have an idea in my head of something that I want to do. And I'll show you when I start coloring the flower. And then I've got PC928, which is blush pink. So I'm using blush pink as my highlight color. And then I've got two darker colors because I kind of have a plan for both of those. But I don't necessarily have a mid-tone color yet, and I might bring something else in, but I don't know. I'm going to see how it works out first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my white Prisma color, and I am going to come into the center of each petal on the flower, and I'm just going to apply some white to the centers of each one. And you probably can't see it on camera, but I can see it. And I'm just doing this so that I... Oh, there goes my lead. I'm just doing this so that when I lay down the other colors, I can see it and I know what area to stay out of. And I kind of want to blend my lighter color into this a little bit. So I'm just kind of doing it so that I have a guide for myself. You can either apply your white now or you can apply your white later if you're following along and coloring the same flower. Okay, so the next color I'm coming in with is going to be my blush pink. And I am going to just come in very lightly on the outer edges of where I laid that white. Just like that. And if you laid your white down, you'll be able to feel where the white is laid down. And it will kind of, I don't want to use the word attach itself, but you could feel the barrier where the wax is so that you don't move into another area of the flower where you laid the white. So it's probably a good idea that you did lay that white down and don't wait until the end to apply the white to the centers. Don't go all the way to the top because I have another plan for the top of the flower. <laughs> I'm doing this to every single one of them. I'm 
coming in with my Mulberry, which is PC995, and I am going over just the top edges of each petal. So now I'm going to use my violet, which is PC932, and we are going to use this for all of the areas here where you see one petal laying under the other petal. So like in here, we're going to lay some violet, and then we're going to go all the way around this outer edge. Make sure your lead is very sharp when you're doing this so that you're only getting that outer edge of each petal. I think that these colors are going to look gorgeous together. in the areas where I have the petal where the petal is kind of flipped over. I have not done anything to those areas yet, but I am going to come in here and I am going to add some of this violet in these areas. This one, I can't really tell if it's another petal under there or if it's the area where the petals flipped over. I'm assuming that it's the area where the petal is flipped over. And if it's not, then it is going to be now. <laughs> but it will look great when it's done. Now I am going to bring my mulberry back in. I'm wondering if we'll be able to do this with just three colors or just four, the four colors. I guess I'm not counting white as a color, but I'm wondering if we'll be able to get this done and make it look absolutely beautiful with just these minimal colors. I am going to come in with the mulberry and I am just going to come in here and just add a little bit of color. Oh, it looks like I forgot one little spot right in here. But I just went inside the lines on the center of the flower. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll have to get my little trusty mono eraser and try to pull that up. Notice how I'm making sure where I lay the colors that they are varying colors and there's a contrast and so I'm avoiding laying the colors right next to one another. And I'm doing that so that the flower has 
some depth to it and it doesn't look like a flat object on the page when it's done. Okay, so now I'm going to come back with my violet and I'm just going to go over these here. Now I think we're ready to start applying some of our second layer layers now that we've got our base laid down and we know where we're going to apply our colors. So I am going to come back with my blush pink and I am going to pull down and blend in where I have the mulberry on each petal. flower now you'll notice that it is starting to get a little bit of depth to where it's not flat and we're going to continue to come in and improve upon that and make it have even more depth to create the look that is actually popping off of the page so I'm going to come back with my mulberry and I am going to add my second layer of mulberry now in all the top edges of our flower come back with my blush pink and I'm going to pull some more of this through and just add another layer. bring in my mulberry and down in these areas where I've got the violet I'm just going to go over that a little bit just so that it doesn't look so flat and I'm just going to blend it in a little bit. time for a second layer of violet so I'm going to come in and do that now and what this is going to do is just going to create even more depth between each petal
now I'm going to come in with my blush pink again and I'm just going to pull a little bit of this out but make sure when you do this that you don't go all the way into the white areas. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here where I notice that some of the areas I missed where I've got one petal overlapping the other and what this is going to do is it's just going to create a little bit more depth to the flower. Also going to come down in here and I am just going to add a little bit more of this violet in some areas. Right where it just kind of meets the, um, the center of the flower so that we could kind of create that separation between the center and the petals of the flower. And if you notice I'm going over each one of these lines to try to make them darker. I don't think my lead on my pencil is sharp enough. If you notice that when you're coloring you can just kind of turn your pencil So let's go ahead and come back with the mulberry again and we're going to try to pull some of this through. And I think the last step is just going to be bringing in some of the white and I missed a little area here where this petal is to the front of the other petal. Okay, so I think we have enough of our dark color and I noticed that I got a little bit in the center of the flower. I've got my little Mono Zero eraser here. And anytime I do that and I have little small areas that I accidentally went into, I just get out this eraser, which is absolutely wonderful. And I just remove the color as much as I can, considering these are purples and pinks and there's a lot of red in them. Red is always a little bit harder to erase but it'll take up as much as it possibly can okay so let's go ahead and come back with our white prisma color now and I am going to come back over the areas that I did in white and I'm going to bring it all through
to create a little more depth, so now I'm going to come back with this dioxazine. I think I'm saying that right, purple hue. And it's a very dark purpley blue. You could see the difference between the two purples. And I think that this one is just going to create the amount of depth that I'm looking for in my flower. So I'm going to just come here in the corners of the top area on all of these and then I am going to come all around the flower and put it also in all the areas where I want a bit more depth. the areas where the petal is kind of flipping over. I am going to pull this through but I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of white if I can in the flipped over petals that are larger. I'm wondering if I should use another color or maybe I'll just blend it through with my white. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to grab my white and we're just going to burnish this out and bring it through. Look how pretty that is. And then it just adds that little bit of lighter area there in the center which I think really adds to the flower. And do it over here. And here I'm just going right in the center. And then I'm just going to go over these just to blend them through. And I'm going to just color a little bit on my scratch paper that I have over here set off to the side. And I am going to come back and just kind of pull some of this through here. So now I'm going to come back with my violet and I am just going to come in at the very tips just to create a little more depth on these flowers and I'm going to add a little bit of this color only on the outer petals. It doesn't make a whole lot difference, but it does make a difference and help your outer petals to really stand out. And then when I come in and I color the leaves, they will also really stand out in front of the leaves. So now we just need to color the center of the flower and I really want the center of the flower to really kind of pop off the page. So I'm kind of trying to decide if maybe I want it to be yellow. Let's go ahead and do the center and I think that I really want the center yellow. 
So I chose Canary Yellow since it's a little bit one of the darker yellow brights. And um, I think that when I do the leaves, which will be in the next video, I am going to use the same colors. So I'm just going to come all in here and I'm just going to just overall shade this with yellow. And I'm leaving a little bit of white in the center there, if you can see that. And then I'm going to come in with my um, light umber, and this is just to add a little bit of shadows to that, to the yellow, so that it doesn't just look flat. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just kind of adding it like in the corners and such. And I'm not going to lay down too much of it because I don't want it to look brown. I'm going to go over it again with my yellow. And those of you that know me know that I'm probably going to, well, not probably, I'm definitely going to add some stickles to this. But I'm just doing this so that they stand out a little bit. Okay, so that kind of darkened up the yellow quite a bit, and then I'm just going to blend it out with more of the canary yellow, just to brighten it back up. And I think I need something that is a little bit lighter yellow to come in there and finish off that center. Or maybe I could use white. I don't know. Let me see. I think I'm going to use my cream. And I'm just going to pull this through. And I will need to come back with my brown and just go over these areas as well. Make sure your lead on your, I know I called this brown, this is my light umber, but make sure that your lead on your light umber is fairly sharp. Mine is probably not sharp enough. But when I do the leaves, it's really going to bring all of this together. And it's going to look really pretty. But this video has already gone so long that that will definitely be in another video probably the next one because everybody's been asking me for Prismacolor combinations and leaf tutorials. So I figured that I could get all of that into one video. Okay, so here's what we got so far. And I'm going to grab me some stickles. Let me go back over it one more time with my cream. Just kind of blend it out. And now I have my favorite color stickles, which is Sunburst. I think I use this one more than any other one because, I don't know, maybe I just love yellow. <laughs> but let's go ahead and apply that. 
and this will just really make it pop a little bit more. If you don't have stickles, you need to get some. <laughs> They're like the best thing ever. I always have a link down in the description box, and I've got a link down there for where I purchase my stickles. Okay, I think we have enough laid down. Oh, how pretty. Let me go ahead and add a little bit more in the center. Oh, that's so pretty. I don't know, off camera I might come back and add a little bit more glitter on the petals but I love how it turned out. Let me go ahead and go over for you all the colors that I used since I did bring in more colors. Okay, so for the flower, we used our mulberry and that name that I had trouble pronouncing, the diox dioxazane purple hue, and then the violet and the blush pink. And then for the center, we used cream, my little nub of cream. Oh, for the flower, we also used the white prisma, and that's what you see in the centers. So I've got cream and canary yellow and my light umber, and that's what was in the center. And then, of course, my sunburst. In the next video, I am going to color all of these leaves that go with this flower, and I'm doing it in a separate video because this video has already gone on way too long, and I'm going to show you a really cool leaf combination, and I'm going to bring the colors from the flower into the leaves, so it is going to look super cool. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have your bell notifications on when I get around to posting that video. And if you would like to support me on Patreon, I'm also over there. And I also have an email list now as well, which is down in the description below. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Happy coloring. Bye.